Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, episode 303. Can your culture have legends about elves if they exist? Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Welcome back. My name is Jeffrey W. Ingram, and the answer is yes. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Great episode, guys. Great episode. Bring that energy next time. <laughs> uh, I am Michael Miller, and if we're going to keep recording maybe we talk about elves not existing or existing or existing you know and, and the i i think the point i want to get to here is i don't even remember what inspired this it was something on the webernet so thank you whoever inspired this episode um i don't i thought I, I misread it the first time i read it <clears throat> i yeah. thought it was a case of like it i thought the question you were asking was if you have a world and within the context of that world elves are not even a thought mm-hmm. and and they don't exist can you have legends about them and that's of course because there are legends of elves on earth right right well they're real yeah but this is more <clears> of a <throat> philosophical question of if you have a fantasy culture and in your world elves exist uh-huh. would a fantasy culture in your world have legends about mythical elves and uh, what, I, so would that mean that they are the same race, but they're like more mythical or a different kind of elf? What do you mean? So, so it's like, you know, just like we have elves in mythology on earth. Could you have that where they might or might not match up with the actual elves that exist? Well, and that's what, to say, obviously they're not your neighbors. If they're right next door to you. Can I, so, no. so that we don't get, overly confused in this conversation oh, we're going to be overly confused okay can't can i request that we say human and refer to earth so that i can try to file follow along with your thought once i really nail well, it down the then problem we can get is back because to the elf elves part. don't exist on earth right but humans do so what humans i'm do. saying is you know could you have i'm going to reread your question can your culture have legends about humans if they exist so exactly So humans exist in the real world Mm -hmm. and can we have legends about them? Do you mean larger than life humans where they have abilities that humans don't have? Well, that's the philosophical dive of the whole episode, correct? So, okay. All right. So I can return to elves now, now that I understand what you're trying to say. I got what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. So in your fantasy world, if elves exist and, and one of these things is, you know, and I think Michael really just kind of gave away the answer there because the answer is oh, the answer is yes. Obviously, yes. <laughs> we have myths about humans all over the place. You know, Amazons, you know, the Amazonian were uh, a human culture that supposedly existed, which might or might not have actually existed, but uh, they were believed to have existed. Uh, and well, I mean, you could humans. you could you could also go with um, Atlanteans. Atlanteans, yeah. I mean, that goes back, you know. Maybe to pre uh, uh, written word. I mean, you Pangea? Know. Maybe, maybe during mm, that time. Maybe I. I think the cur- the current uh, Atlantean belief is uh, the Minoans. Uh, f- there was an island, uh, a tiny island that like blew up and is now like a couple islands um so and, like do you and, mean like over time wiped out wiped over out time it changed or like completes. volcanic yeah so uh so they think that might be what atlantis was was this little island that kind of mm-hmm. blew up you know in blah blah bc um <laughs> fill in fill in more appropriate dates yeah <laughs> fill in the correct date if you want to look it up uh but yeah so i mean so, so really the bigger question is what's a legend you know what's that legendary myth mm-hmm. and and for me uh, and this could be part of the discussion too. It depends on how much we agree or disagree. It's a legend is like a memory of something, and so it, it's kind of like God, right? If God came down and talked to me right now, uh, I would know of him. He could not be a legend or a belief because I would know. So for me, a legend is something that you you don't know, and we typically have legends you know about really old but impactful events, right? So there's something that 
is really need to be remembered. So we create stories to remember them. And sometimes they're inspired by real life people. Um, you know, my personal belief is uh, the idea of elves came about in the North from their first interactions with woodland um, uh, tribes folk who uh, weren't very pleasant and, 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 and elves and, are plenty pleasant. Well, not traditional Norse elves or not. No, um, no, uh, they're, <clears throat> they're very defensive. They will attack you pretty much on site. Oh, we're talking like hardcore forest elves, like the, 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 uh, eco terrorist style elves eco terrorist style elves yeah i, I think it kind of came back and, and there are some beliefs that it's from native americans and that i don't know but it would make sense as useful because the thing is if you know too much about the thing it can't be a legend but let's say you're a nomadic tribe early on you're moving around maybe you brush up against a, a culture that's different um and it's an impactful enough of a moment where stories persist orally, uh, you know, for possibly centuries or generations um, that could maybe turn into a, 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 a fictional race like Elves on Earth did. Or maybe you really met elves, uh, you know, if you're in a fantasy world and you have a memory of these elven people. Now, I would say it would be absolutely not based in reality there would probably it'd be, it'd be like a stereotype to the nth degree <laughs> you know what is that uh, uh that and it could just be the one guy you met right so like this elf pops out and just like is super friendly and helps you out and you're like oh wow these elves are awesome so all the stories but are, he was the outlier he was, he the, was the outlier and and you know they're cannibals and they're all ugly <laughs> they and, hate humans and- yeah so uh, later, almond contacts made you think, "Oh my goodness, you're elves!" And then they they just eat you. Um, that would be bad. Mm. But you know, well, so unless, for unless me, you're, that's unless it. Unless you're it's, the elf, in which case it's just a meal. Le- legends are stories that <laughs> come on. That was good. <laughs> that fit from memory. You know, they're they're somewhere in the memory. They 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 exist as a pattern only. They're not. There's no no real truth to them, even if they're true. No truth. Not not even a. A there could be a truth. basis of truth in them, but at the point they're a legend, it, it's, it doesn't matter. So right now you're still talking about elves in the real world, not elves within a fictional world that actually has elves. The, no, th- this could happen in either place, right? So mm-hmm. I, like I said, in the real world, you might meet a forest tribe and, 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 and have a bad memory of them. And then later on when you settle down and you start writing down your stories, they come out as elves. But in a fictional world, that forest tribe could have been elves, <laughs> you know. So uh, I feel like you're getting complicated for complicated sake in this episode. <laughs> well, because I'm getting philosophical, and I, I, I I'm still I, waiting I, for that part I, to occur. <laughs> I overcomplicate things. That's how I philosophize. Is I, I make things as complicated as possible because if if, if the answers are too simple, then life is boring. Mm, so I don't know if my, I'm with you on this one. Because you're philosophically wrong, I can make a logical argument for it, but I, I'm appealing to emotion right now. Um, now, um, got you there. You weren't expecting that. What, for, um, for you to use the word emotion correctly in a sentence? No, I wasn't. I did? Oh, <laughs> shoot. I didn't even realize. It. Even a broken clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what See, I thought you were going to go in a different direction. I thought you were going to be like... Um, <clears throat> All right. So you talk about, you know, humans on earth that mm-hmm. are uh, legends that you, you make a big deal mm-hmm. out of something. All right. So let's, let's go with, we're just coming off of Halloween. Let's go with the legend of Ichabod Crane. Okay. Um, so it's a story, but there are plenty of people that believe it's true. And maybe there was a thing where a guy mm-hmm. rode across a bridge and got, you know, killed and maybe there was a guy who got his head you know cut off and in, mm-hmm. in a, a an old battle in you know early america so mm-hmm. it, it becomes there's a kernel of truth mm-hmm. but it's been 
passed down orally, as you had yeah. mentioned, and subsequently it becomes a game of telephone where the information gets changed or it's a campfire story and subsequently it's embellished and then shared over the years. Yeah. So, so between the embellishment and the telephone, and it's only a oral history effectively mm -hmm. that it gets changed, modified, and, and subsequently it becomes a legend. Mm -hmm. So I thought you were going in that direction where, sure. That's the basis of it. Well, right, but yeah. the point, my, my big point is that there is truth to it. And you're saying, yeah. you were saying no truth to it. Like, and no, see, what you're, what you're misunderstanding is I'm saying like at this point, the legend of Ichabod Crane, it has no- Which I'm thinking it's not a super great example, but- it, it doesn't matter, but we'll just take that one, right? And because it's a legend. It, it's, it does not matter it, at this point if it's true or not. When I said there's no truth in it, I meant there's, there's no, the truth- or the kernel of truth is irrelevant. I'm also making the assumption that everybody listening knows who Ichabod Crane is. And while while it is he's probably the, a... He's the headless horseman. Well, no, no. He was the one who well, was killed was the by victim. the headless... Yeah. yeah, the headless horseman. So the headless horseman is also a legend. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not from the United States, and I'm sure there's there's other versions then of this story throughout the a world. British thing, I'm assuming. Yeah, but if you've never heard of this, the basic gist is, uh, you know, on Halloween or, you know, some you know, time thereabouts, uh, legend goes, there's this open bridge or covered bridge mm. that, uh, you know, the, the headless horseman guards and anyone who is caught on that bridge at a certain time, the, the horseman rides around with a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a jack-o'-lantern on his, where his head would be. Mm. And he uses that to throw it and subsequently kill his victims. If they are, um, caught on the bridge or out at that night because he is trying to find his missing head. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take yours in substitution for his missing head and replace the pumpkin mm -hmm. head that he has right now. Yeah. And I I Ichabod Crane is like one of his, uh, like a famous victim is, was like, oh, Ichabod was caught by the headless horse. Mm -hmm. You know, never seen, never heard or seen again, never heard from or seen again. Yeah. Now, the reason why I say the truth isn't important, because I, I have a personal belief that legends come from two places. Okay. One, like you said, is a kernel of truth, uh, right? And the other one is a story we tell to get a point across. And the point oh, is- Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You know, back in the day, you did not go from village to village at night. That was a good way to lose your head. So the thing is, if you come up with this this, this story of this 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 down to earth guy who's maybe a good guy who's out for the right reason, gets caught up by this vicious monster and loses his head, or is never seen again. I I, I I I I and that might change. I don't know, but I think he like disappears or something like that. I forget. I forget the story, but I remember the pattern of the story, right? So I don't think there's even a, an event that led to it outside of the fact that if I'm traveling from Windsor Village to Bristol um, back during the Revolutionary War period, which I know Windsor was here, and Bristol could have very easily been here as well. Bristol was probably around. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, most definitely. Or, or it was probably part of Windsor at that point uh, before we freed it. So you owe us tax money. Um, Bristol is kind of far from Windsor. I severely doubt Bristol was part of Windsor. Windsor was a colony originally. It existed. Now you're just making things. From up. Coventry all the way to Barks Hampstead. Not true. And it was one of the three colonies that was pulled in to create Connecticut Colony. Because there was Hartford Colony, which was Connecticut Colony, and New Haven Colony. Um, all three came together. But Windsor, we get everyone says we're the oldest village. Uh, which is true too, uh, but we used to be gigantic. It was a very large, very large landmass, but never a lot of people uh, back in the day. But the thing is, you wouldn't want to travel from where I live in Windsor today to uh, where Michael was uh, in in Bristol at night because the likelihood that even if it's not this headless horseman, it could just be me falling down over a, a tree that I did not see mm -hmm. or, or a branch hitting me on my horse. Um, yeah, uh, if people, at night people, without lights, it sucks. Yeah, a twisted know. ankle can be deadly without medical yeah. attention. You're trapped mm -hmm. in the woods, and and let's not forget predators. Predators, you know, wolves, bears. I mean, heck, there are bears in like there where I live in Windsor. Mountain today. lions. Uh, I there's no mountain lions in Windsor. There'd be a valley lion if they were here, but. Uh, there's, no, there's no mountains in Connecticut, but there's mountain lions in. Connecticut. Uh, there is Burlington Mountain. 
Yeah, they call it a mountain. They're hills. They're not mountains. You know, it's the oldest mountain range in the world. That's why they're worn down. It's called erosion. I know it's a complicated topic, but we'll talk about that in a different episode. They're hills, folks. It'll be a really exciting episode. Okay, this week, erosion. So, when water (laughs) comes along and it moves a bit of dirt. (laughs) Now, this will take billions of years. (laughs) And then when more water and more wind comes along. <laughs> that will be the most exciting episode. Minutes. We're going to save that for 400, I think. That will be- speaking, speaking of upcoming episodes, we are long overdue for uh, adventures. Like, I know we talked about doing the Groundhog adventure next, but maybe we do something different because that's so ambitious. I feel like we've been putting it off. Because it's so, so ambitious? Yeah. Exactly. So I think maybe we bite off something a little easier to chew before we, we get really back to that. You. But, but yeah. we're, over, we're overdue for an adventure. We're overdue for one. We'll, we'll do a holiday one. <gasps> I'm excited. Make up a holiday. Oh, oh. We just got two, three episodes right there. Right there. Yep. We How to make a holiday for your culture. We do a little holiday mm-hmm. adventure. I love it. Yeah, and I, I think this episode is going to come out during the Nanowimo, which I'm not involved in this year, unfortunately. Just due to my uh, schedule, I'm it's also been impossible. Non Nanowimo this year, uh, but I've been non Nano Nanowimo for a couple of years. So. Yeah, and even when he does them, he doesn't really. Um, That's that hurts. It's tight, tight. That that hurts. <laughs> But if you guys are doing NaNoWriMo, good luck. Keep writing. Stop listening to this and get back to work. No, yeah, this, this, <laughs> this is a philosophical episode. To me, this is a lighthearted, fun episode because I like to overthink things, which is why I'm a world builder, because I overthink things. All right. Well, let's get back to your list of questions here. Okay. Where, where were we? So we had kind of talked <laughs> about what is a legend and are they based on reality? Uh, because they don't need to be, right? And that's kind of what we're talking about there. And, and Michael mistook fairly my point on it doesn't need to be real mm-hmm. um a creature does not need to be real for it to be made up or even based on a kernel of reality it could be trying mm-hmm. to explain a story of why we don't go into the desert so right they yeah a, exactly they, cre- they create a legend is it, it, it like a fable that becomes a legend so at the point it's a legend it doesn't matter if there's even a kernel of truth it's just it, it is what it is and sometimes people believe in it and that's an important thing to think about too is how core does the belief about this thing that you're talking about become hmm. Let, let's think you know it's like uh the bedrachim culture early on uh were driven from their homeland from what they call the sand people uh a little homage to Star, Star yeah, yeah, Wars, yeah. yes. I yes. get you. Uh, but the people the tu- came from the, the, Tus- the Tuscan Raiders pushed them out. The, that's right. But it was literally, it was a group, of, sort of a Persian-like culture that mm-hmm. early on when it was starting to come up, uh, the Bedrakan culture was based north of them. So as they start to expand, it's kind of like you're going to become part of our empire. But they decided if, uh, there, were, there were no Mac at the point. So they're like, we'll just keep moving. And that's what caused them to sort of move over to the part of the world where they end up settling and becoming a, a, a an agrarian culture at. And um, but because of that, there is a god, uh, uh, the the leader of the Sand People is 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 one of their gods in their world. He's considered an evil god, uh, but it's really based off of a human culture from the world. And so the idea of what these people are do not match up with humans at all because they're telling the story of, you know, probably why we don't go down and fight them on their turf. You know, we're not used to the heat. We're not used to the lack of water. There are things that we're not used to down there. So we don't do that. We just, you, 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 you try and escape and survive sand people. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the irony is later on, like, you know, a thousand, 2000 years later, when the Askari really become like this massive empire threatening uh, to take over their society, they don't realize it's the same group. <laughs> it's because they don't call them the Askari. They don't have that name for them. Mm-hmm. They just call, you know, for them, they're the sand people. And so, but it happens to be the same group who they end up clashing with in a couple thousand years uh, over the domination of where they decided to actually settle at. So, uh, so, even if it's based on reality, when you pass a thousand years or even 500 for humans, for short lived races, um, you know, legends uh, form up and, and the basis on reality is probably not that great. If they had a good oral tradition with stories, the stories are probably fairly consistent. Um, 
even though I, I would have a tendency to believe that they do get exaggerated over time. Um, they change a little bit, you know. All of Homer's stories were not Homer's stories. Even if they got credit to him, it was because maybe he was the guy who was best known for it at a certain time. If there was ever even really a Homer, he himself could just be a legend. Uh, and, this guy who came up with all of our stories. I bet I bet Homer was real. He was probably just the guy that wrote it down. Uh, no, because he was pre, pre-alphabet. Uh, which really? Is why, oh, yeah. that's true. The Iliad was a, was an oral story prior to it actually being you know written. So he didn't write it. And they've actually done really interesting stories. We're going to talk about what a legend is. We talked about, you know, are they based on reality? And then how important are the beliefs? Do they, like, get internalized to the point of being a religious belief? I think this is a really important thing. And I'll, and I'll give you a, a little story of why, like, this is a really important thing that happened in my world. Um, but I won't tell you here. I'll wait till later on. But, you know, a lot of times some legends become religious. Some beliefs, because the belief itself, it's reinforced and becomes religious. And to me, when that happens, um, there's an inherent risk. Because let's say uh, once you... Um, a belief becomes what I, I call a religious belief instead of just a, a cultural belief. Uh, the risk is when you meet the elf skin, do they meet the religious ideal? And to put it into a, a, a thing, you know, we like to talk about angels, the servants of God, right, here on earth. Lots of people believe in angels. Even it's even larger than a Christian thing. There are angel believers. It's a multi-denominational thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, spirits that aid uh, uh, God or the gods. Um, um, at least in Western, it's usually good gods um, um, that get aided uh, with angels. I don't really know about pre uh, Abrahamic. I could be wrong there. I don't know. I, 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 but like Valkyrie, you know, would be an older version of angels, you know, in a pagan sense. Um, but um, what happens if you actually met an angel? Like, you have a belief of an angel. It's tied to religion. What happens if you met one? And what happens if, like, they're like, oh, 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 we don't believe in your God, or I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, they don't live up to your expectation of what an angel should be. Um, another good example, uh, spoiler alert, uh, but I, we spoiled this before, so uh, hopefully I've only ruined it for you once. Childhood's <laughs> End. Um, the great philosophical question in childhood's end was the aliens who came and you thought it was going to be an independence day style movie. Um, uh, they, you know, childhood's end. This is a movie. Childhood's end was, a. Uh, I don't know if they made a movie it was a book. Oh, okay. Cause you said movie and I was like, um, well, now that I've even heard of that, there's a movie independence day, which starts off just like it. Um, uh, giant spaceships, like like spherical spaceships, they they come and start parking over major world capitals. Mm-hmm. But instead of blowing them all up, they actually send a message like, "Okay, we're here to help. Uh, you have to lay down your arms and just do whatever we tell you to." And of course, and, that doesn't happen. And of course, you know, most human leaders are good, and they're like, "Okay, this is for the betterment of humankind. We will do as you want. Fire the nukes." And <laughs> the the nukes make no dent. It's just like the giant spaceships yawn. Like it was literally, I think it was like France and Germany, and like the France fired a nuke at the spaceship over Berlin. <laughs> and uh, well, it just that's just because it happens to be there. <laughs> oh, the best shot we had available, the one over Paris, just couldn't get the angle on it. Yes. And um, it has nothing to do with it. We haven't gotten along in for a hundred years. <laughs> And, and they're like, no, 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 that's not going to work. Uh, and then for people who really didn't listen, they would literally create a disc to blot out the sun mm-hmm. from their land. So, like, your crops couldn't get fed. You know, it's like, no, we, we don't like violence. But and I think they did that in, like, South Africa. They're like, you know, until apartheid ends, we're just going to blot out the sun. And they're like, okay. And... and Pretty quickly, when people realized there was literally nothing they could do, and the information they were sending down was actually useful, um, people started following what they were saying, and and you know the poverty rates started to go to zero, and 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 people started getting healthier, and 
everything was awesome until someone saw one because they look like demons, like earth mythology demons. And so as soon as someone saw one, isn't this, didn't you have a story similar to like this, a campaign? I, 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 I completely stole that where, uh, uh, my five year campaign, the, uh, bad guys, people were hunting look like demons. So, uh, and in a way, it was actually sort of it was stolen from from childhoods and the, the big bad guys, quote unquote, of this five year campaign. People go through it and they finally defeat them and they realize, oh, they're, wait, they actually were, good, good. they're actually trying to like solve all of our issues. Um, and I took it because there was actually a point in the story they talked about they had tried it before and it didn't work. It went really bad because people saw them, so they tried to hide in their spaceships and they wouldn't let people see them because they knew what would happen if people saw them. And so I'm like, the, the, I want to do the story in my head of the time before where it failed. Uh, <laughs> and that's what happened on my world. <laughs> gotcha. That makes sense. So it was actually in a way it was fan fiction, I guess. Um, but yes. Uh, but you know, to me though, it becomes an important question because especially depending on when you interact with someone, how strong their religious convictions are can be very meaningful. Most cultures, it's only been relatively recently where you can kind of openly not believe in things, right? I mean, probably even 100 years ago, you probably, you would probably be, you know, I mean, around the time of Darwin, most places in the world, you you just kind of believe it's, it's the safer proposition. Um, you know, it's a relatively new development in humankind where people can be atheist or agnostic um, and, and not be uh, brutally murdered, um, mm-hmm. at least in the United States. And I would imagine in most developed countries, um, but uh, I'm hoping, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, so the thing, but it, it is really important because before this point, like go back to hundred years and, and take something that was really important to Christians and break it in front of them and see how they react. And, and where this came in in my game world, I had a, I had a group of I, I had my dwarfs. I had a group called the Inner Dwarfs. They lived on the surface of the planet, and their the other uh, dwarven race was called the Outer Dwarfs. Would be their translation, and they made uh, they lived outside of the cave. They thought the world was a cave. And they were trying to dig to the cave that heaven was in. That was their whole existence was digging to find the cave that heaven was in because the caves that we came from sucked. Hmm. And um, and so literally it's like a really important religious uh, part of this race. And at one point there's, there's a war called the War of the Crosses, which is a bad name in it. It's not lexicon because it was the name I came up with on the fly, but uh, crosses weren't the holy symbol, so it doesn't really. Mm-hmm. But that's like the English translation, right? It's the war of the crosses, it's the war of the religion. And the problem was, like, about a hundred years before the war started, someone had actually proven to the dwarfs scientifically that the planet was round and they weren't actually inside the universe, they were inside the planet. Mm. And it literally broke and, and caused massive civil wars within the dwarven culture and a, and a fundamental shift in their religious beliefs. And then that was used to, to start a massive holy war on the surface. Uh, you know, they, were, they became a pawn in a larger uh, uh, a power play for a, uh, a holy war on the surface of the planet. So, um, but it was literally, it was taking their belief from their legend, which was that they were digging in the universe to find space and breaking the belief when they were fanatical. And it was like they either had to find a way to defanaticize or they found a new way, which is what the person was trying to get, who, who did this, was trying to prove to them because they wanted to redirect the fanaticism in the way they wanted. Um, and so that's the thing. And the interesting, like, I think an interesting theme is what happens when your belief is proven wrong, you know? And it's so funny because even in the real world, like, you know, you can take someone evidence of their beliefs. And I, I know, right, let's go right to political, right? And 
you could take someone on the right or the left. They'll always accuse the other side of doing this and prove them wrong empirically from a dogmatic belief they have in their politics. And they will call you a liar <laughs> to your face. And then when you have that moment to minutes later, they'll go like, oh, you're anti-science. And <laughs> <laughs> because we all have beliefs That's and they're so really hard true. to overcome. You know, but what happens when, you know, you have this cultural shift because, of, you know, you believe in elves and elves with a certain way. And then, you know, a thousand years later, you know, you have Explorer Bob who meets an elf and they're either nothing the same or they're exactly the same. You know, there's like a lot of stories where, and I don't know how true this is, but a lot of stories from Europeans that, you know, that there were beliefs that they look like the gods of Mesoamericans. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if this was just them wishing or, or I don't know if there's any truth to this or not. I'm not uh, saying that's really true, but there are really stories out there saying that that's true. But what would happen on that first contact if, if someone walked up to you, they look just the way you thought God should look. Mm. Um, that is a, to me, a terrifying prospect, right? Like, whoops. Uh, especially if you got it wrong <laughs> or in the case of like, if it's true and like the Mesoamericans met the Spanish and like, Oh, you, you are a God. The Spanish are like, Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> Give us your gold. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That's not valuable to us. You know, and, and that's something that you do see a, a lot of times thematically used in science <clears throat> fiction where you you uh stargate was very fun they had a, a couple of really good episodes about this but where people assumed you were a god because of the way you came to them and then what would happen when someone took advantage of that you know and it's a great moral question um and it's good and i think it's a great theme to take up in fantasy as well um, i'm sure there are some good examples of that too because there are lots of brilliant people doing stuff um, he came to me by Uber. He's a god. Sorry, I just had a funny thought about that. Yeah. I mean, no one can get Uber here. Oh, you need an app? That's it? Crap. <laughs> um, Reginald isn't a god. And, and now here's the bigger problem, though, is what happens if you fall short of your expectations? You know, and I, I think, you know, it, you can make a moral argument that it's safer not to pretend to be a God in, in a scenario where someone thinks you are, because if you tell them you're a God and you prove them that you're not, what's their reaction going to be? Ray, when someone asks you, if you're a God, you say yes. <laughs> uh, Sorry. We can, we're touching. Are you serious? Never heard of that. Shut up. Okay. So, all right, next question. Um, oh, and, and that's really, that is really the last question is what happens if they don't live up? And this, uh, I think, depends a lot on the actual culture. Um, you know, one, how dogmatic is the belief to them that you're breaking? Uh, you know, if it's to the level of you are our God, oh, you're not, or you can't do what we think you're supposed to be able to do, even though you are the thing that we think is God, you know, we now have problems with you and how's the culture react, you know, or race and fantasy, right? How do they react to having their expectations not lived up to exceeded as one thing, right? Like, Oh, we think you're Frank, the destroyer. And then Frank goes on and blows up everything twice. And they're like, oh, oh wow. Okay. We were right. <laughs> Frank uh -huh. the Destroyer. But my name is Bob. Whatever. Good enough for us. You know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you fail up to those expectations, what's the interesting thing there? You know, what's, what's the reaction? You know, and the way I always like to address these when I'm thinking about cultures and world building is I have to think of a culture as an entity. You know, it's its own thing. And so the, the cultural reaction is, you know, you know, in most of my cultures would be attack. And, and let's be honest, on earth, falling short of a, especially a dogmatic belief would usually end up in being attacked. Um, 
Probably physically. Um, <laughs> not just uh, intellectually? <laughs> not just, not maybe including to or up to uh, physical threats to uh, a person. But, you know, the individuals in the culture, you know, it, you know no one is really 100% lined up with their culture. It's a core of it's a structure that, that you agree with and you move forward with, but no one's ever exactly that way. So you can have deviations where maybe the ruler's like, I see an advantage in this. So I'm going to try and work something out to, you know, to strengthen my position as the ruler, but which could then cause troubles with between the ruler and his people who think that they should just attack, hmm. you know, Oh no, these are the desert people. We must destroy them before we all dissolve. Uh, so uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, but you just think about like how a, a person would react, you know, give your culture's personalities based off of the norm for the culture. And, 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 and that's the generic reaction from most people within that culture automatically. And then you'll have the 5% who, 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 who 10 exit and, you know, Five percent who divide it by ten in the reaction. So, uh, those are your outliers in the culture. <clears throat> I think we definitely have another um, legends episode. We we need to hit this subject from a different um, angle. I think. Oh, well, the other thought was uh, taking the famous line: um, "They might be giants, and what will we do if they are?" It if. They are legends if they are real. I don't know. They might be thought. giants, and what do we do if they are? Oh, they might be giants, and what do we do if, they, if yeah. we are? Gotcha. Yeah. But that, that should have actually been the episode name. I feel I feel cheated now. I, I... She's actual size, but she seems much bigger to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love they might be giants. Have you ever seen them in concert? Yes. And actually, I. I it was a tremendous treat too, because it was not that long ago. It was probably when I saw they might be giants in concert was probably 2012 or 13. And my wife and I saw that they were playing up in Northampton. And we're like, heck yeah. We're yeah. Gonna go see good, this. good place to see them too. And it was the thing that was awesome was they're like, okay, this is sort of an unannounced special. Um, the first half of the show, we're going to do flood. The entire which is album of such a, which is such a good album. The way it was originally done. I, I'm not sure I follow. What do you mean? So you know, like over years, done. you know, they start making adjustments and and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and things in shows. So it's not really the same song as when it was originally produced. Gotcha. And the, but they they did it as it was originally made. Um, so it was like literally listening to the album live being played by them, which is one of the best albums. That, I think one of my most favorite albums, definitely. It's definitely their best album. Um, oh, that's an it's argument. their best album. It is their best they might John, John Henry is actually a really good album. And no, and not. Flood, Flood's a great album. Flood was the one that they did. That's oh, the I, I'm I, no, about. I'm sorry. I'm not talking you're saying Flood, but my brain is going, um Oh God, what was the other one that was really, really good? Flood's the one with the um No, what's the one uh, I, I think I'm thinking was it Lincoln? No, uh, 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 Adams, John Quincy Adams. No, no, no. The one, no. the one, sorry. That is my wife calling me. Um, I apologize for the interruption folks. Um, I think I'm thinking of, um, the album titled Lincoln, which was mm-hmm. also a very, very good album. Yes. But John John Henry's a great album. I'm going to argue. I mean, Flood Flood is very easy to argue. It's their best. There are songs that are better that aren't on Flood. But like, if, just like song for song. Mm. Like every song on that album is great. Okay. So now for the world building task. This is going to be a little, kind of what I normally do, but a little different. Make a legendary creature or a person, whatever you want to do, called Michael. Do whatever you want to with it. This is based off of Mike. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but make up a legend based off of Michael. So it, it's pr- so he's the kernel of truth. Do with it as you will. 
And go to facebook.com slash group slash undercroft and share. Make sure yeah, to tag me. With yeah, it. tag me. Tag me. Uh, that I'm eager to see what you guys come up with. This would be fun. And, I, and this is Jeffrey asking, but I, I'm not saying it just to troll him. If you happen to troll him, make it because <laughs> it happened artistically, though. Feel don't, free to feel free to troll me. <laughs> I'm just saying don't, don't do it just to troll him. Just if it artistically happens to be a trolling, I'm fine with it. Oh, oh, you're and fine. Trolling, I will glad. see as art. So glad you're you fine with it. <laughs> and then for the real world task, um, you have a real world task. I know I wrote one down here. Well, I mean, I um, if you're if you're working on NanoRimo, keep at it. If you're not working on NanoRimo, start preparing for the holidays. They're coming. Mm-hmm. Um, beyond that, enjoy the fall weather before it is too cold. At least here in New England. And it's starting to get It's probably cold. too late. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to get cold. We'll have one or two more warm days before we're in for the Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's seasonally chilly at this moment. It so. is very, yeah. I'm hoping that Saturday, because I'm going to New York on Saturday, so I'm hoping that it's a little warmer on Saturday. It's, it's, I think it's supposed to be closer to seasonable temperatures. So. Cool, very cool. Uh, and in New York, where are you going? Are you going to the city? Or? Yeah, we're going to be on the Upper East Side, but so I'm, probably, probably g- fine. I'm probably going to go to the... Is. I'm probably going to... Well, the thing is, in New York, it's always windy, especially if it's if, especially if the air temperature is cold. And what the, if you've never been to New York City, especially in Midtown, where it's very much a grid, this is what happens in the, in the cooler months. The sun, when it is midday, is on... Is, it hits the island from the south of the island, which means the avenues get a lot of light, and subsequently it heats up the air on those uh, on the, the avenues. The streets, however, run east to west, and the streets are more in line with the jet stream. So the wind cuts through the streets from the Henry Hudson across the island. So it really makes for very weird weather conditions. You could be on an avenue, and if there's a, a big enough uh, amount of buildings on that block, it can feel really warm. If the air hasn't been moving and the sun is hitting that mm. uh, avenue dead on, then it can be really warm there. But then when you turn the corner and you go, go onto one of the streets and you walk halfway down, if there's a lot, again, if there's a lot of buildings there, they are now blocking all the light, the air that is being warmed on the other block is not getting to this block and you might have wind cutting through the street and subsequently it's frigid. You're only so, like so 400. Across town it's, what you're right, yeah. It's only like a 400 foot dist- difference, but it can be a, like 15 to 20 degree temperature difference. Depending. So what you're saying is just use the subway to go across town. Definitely. And I'm also saying layer, like I will be layered on mm. Saturday. So you can hop the thing off, put it back. On. Exactly. exactly. Layering is always good in the cold weather, folks. Real world task. Layer. layer. Yeah. Okay. Have a great week. We'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike where the myth rules hot.